Good afternoon, good evening everyone. Welcome to the uh, City Council Public Works Committee meeting for Thursday, July 21st. Uh, we'll start today's what I hope will be a quick meeting uh, with introductions of councilors and we'll begin on the far left. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mike Doak, District 24. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Josh Bain, District 20 on the southwest side. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Michael Paul Hart, District 18. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Christi Kristen Jones, District 16. And Councilor Ray. Good evening. David Ray, District 19 on the east side. Thank you. Jessica McCormick, 15 west side. Krista Carlino, District 6 west side. William Oliver, District 9. Uh, Monroe Gray, District 8. And I'm Zach Adamson, District 17, uh, near north, near east, and near southeast side of downtown. Uh, we have a new Nathan today, so we've got some uh, items that will will be uh, uh, breaking Natalie in today. Hello, everyone. Hi. Uh, so these are all sort of different. So I, ordinarily, I'd take a, a lot of these small ones together, but they're all sort of different. So we'll start with yeah. Proposal 251, which appoints Damon Richards to the fatal crash review team. That's, that's a council appointee. That's not a DPW proposal. Okay, so are we just? Yes, this is Damon right here. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I know Damon. <laughs> um, uh, okay, so we have a resume in here for? Yep, it should be a page two. Um, are there any questions or comments for Mr. Richards? Mr. Richards, do you want to come up and give us a little, there's a microphone there, tell us a little bit about yourself, why you'd like to be on the uh, uh, Fatal Crash Review. Well, for the past five years, I have been the Executive Director of Bike Indianapolis. Mm -hmm. um, and during the last couple of years, we've seen a lot more bicycle fatalities and tremendously more pedestrian fatalities. Um, Bike Indianapolis pushed for reestablishing this uh, fatal crash review team uh, a couple of times at our public events last year. So just interested in making sure that we do what we can to keep our citizens safe. Very good. Are there any questions or comments for Mr. Richards? Any questions or comments from the public on Proposal 251? Seeing none, the chair will entertain a motion. Council McCormick. Thank you. Uh, uh, I said um, send proposal number 251 to the full council with the due pass recommendation. And there's been a second uh, to send proposal 251 to the full council with the due pass recommendation. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes have it. Thanks. Thanks. We'll see you at the full council. All right. Proposal number 252 authorizes parking restrictions along the east side of Harding Street from the alley 2475 north to a point 180 feet south on, in District 11. Yes. Uh, do I then read this again? Okay. Proposal number 252, uh, District 11, authorizes, authorizes parking restrictions along the east side of Harding Street from alley 2475 north to a point 180 feet south. Is, is the, and this is, uh, is this residential restrictions or what, what is this, loading zone? No, this is in front of a business called Al's Mini Mart, um, and they were in need of a temporary restriction so that they could have incoming deliveries. Okay, so this is, is it a loading zone? So it's not a loading zone, it is a parking restriction that um, allows for temporary parking in the location, but not exceeding 20 minutes. Okay, so then it's a 20 minute loading zone then, is that right? Um, I actually do not know. Okay, do we do we know what kind of restrictions these are? Just so that we're on the same page. District Eleven, that's Vops. District. Yes, it's uh, yes, it's President Osley's district, um, and I believe it is a temporary loading zone. Temporary loading zone. So by temporary, it's not going to be there permanently, or no temporary is in no not extended parking. Not extended parking. Yes. Okay. Uh, does anyone else have any questions uh, on proposal two fifty two? Yeah. 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 It's okay, Councilor Carlini. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It does look like the language in the actual proposal refers to parking um, in section one being prohibited at all times. Um, so I don't know if, about the temporary. I don't see that language, sir. Thank you. So, yeah, so it's probably just a 20-minute loading zone. That is very possible. Yeah, I'm thinking. 
That's okay. That. Sorry. Any other any other questions, uh, Councilor Hart? Do you have something? No, I just wanted. To just, I, I was looking at that. So, what's what throwing me off a little bit is, you know, I'm seeing that it's a, in the digest that we're authorizing the restriction, but then I start reading the sections, and it shows proposal for general ordinance to amend the revised codes to make various changes. Chapter six twenty one, which is the parking section. Right. Okay, I see. All right, no, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, it just add, it looks like it's adding that street. What was the yeah, it wasn't it, underlined or anything. Yeah, it's just adding the street to yeah. the existing no, uh, loading zone type areas. Right. That makes sense. Yeah, I just wish I had a better understanding of what kind of parking restrictions it was going to be. But it looks like just sort of a 20 minute loading zone. Yeah. Yes, that is how it was. Yeah. Right. Okay. Any other questions for Natalie on this proposal? Any other questions or comments from the public on proposal 252? Seeing none, Chairman, want to take a motion? So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. It has been moved and seconded to send proposal 252 to the full council to do pass recommendation. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes have it. Very good. Go ahead and do 253. Okay, proposal number 253 authorizes residential permit parking at 1440 Milburn Street in District 11. Very good. This is also in Bops District. Um, residential parking permit. We've got a lot of those going on these days. Councilor Oliver, do you have a question? Yeah, yeah thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I've seen a couple of those permits. Uh, how did, how, what, what qualifies a person to get I've seen a handicapped uh, person that said no parking in front of the house. What, what are the kind of uh, permits or issues and how you go about getting them? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I park? think I know the answer. Yeah. That's what uh, Dan Parker, Director of DPW. So to qualify, there is a policy uh, by DPW. Uh, not everybody can just get automatic residential permit parking. It's set out in code. What we look at is, um, does, a, does a household have off-street parking options? So if you have a driveway, if you have a garage, if you've got a parking pad, then you do not qualify for residential permit parking. Um, so it, it, you have to petition for it, and then we have to analyze it. And there's been several that have come in, typically closer to downtown where there isn't a driveway or a garage or someplace for them to park. So um, this particular uh, address, just because, that, and that's why it's just one, they wanted it on the entire street, but only one person qualified. In regard to handicap parking, I believe that is something that can be requested through the Mayor's Action Center and will be sent along to our engineering team for installation. Yes. Council Gray? So is this good? Is this going to be parking, residential parking for the entire block? No. Just for this that is only address. permitted for 1440 Milburn Street. Some background here was they had alleyway access that allowed them uh, parking. However, due to a development, there was a, essentially it no longer was feasible for them to be able to park within their alleyway and have enough room to back out, turn around, do what they need to do in order to park there. Um, so after review, it was determined that this one address would qualify. Okay. Councilor Hart and then Councilor Oliver. Yeah, I just want to make a request um, for future times when we go through these. You know, I'm pulling these up on Google Maps as I'm looking at them, but I think it'd be helpful if we had a like a sky view mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. the packet just to kind of give us a reference point. Yeah, that'd be my, and it, we don't even have to have it in the packet. If you throw it up on the screen, mm -hmm. that would be useful Would you like as well. me to do that now? No. Okay. No. <laughs> just, just in the in the future. Um, now, we'd like to see the layout so that we can understand some of the dynamics that are at play in the, in the qualifications for Absolutely. the issuance. Yeah. Very good. Thank you, Councilor Hart. Councilor Oliver. Yes, one more. Uh, I'm trying to support uh, 253, but just so my own understanding. Uh, I got a couple blocks in, in my district to where parking was eliminated. Uh, on one side of the street, there's uh, 12 houses in this block. Over the last several years, anyway, uh, there may be 15, 20 cars. 
do the property owner have exclusive rights to that parking space in front of their property when the block is just polluted with family houses that have three and four families in there, three or four cars. You understand know, where I'm getting at? People had to park on the grass, uh, park illegally, but is a homeowner entitled to park? My they have a reserve spot for the house. Sure. My understanding is no, because it is a public street. It has public access points. So unless it were a situation that did qualify for something like residential permit parking or was in an area with permitted parking, my understanding is that as long as those cars have not been abandoned, as long as they are parked legally, um, there is no exclusive right to the adjacent property owner. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, very good. Thank you, Councilor. Uh, Councilor McCormick. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just I wanted to point out I didn't notice it. Actually, Chris, Councillor Carlino pointed it out. Um, there are maps at the very back of our packet for all three. Um, yeah, Kim pointed that out. Yeah. Just they are at satellite view. Yeah, they're yeah. not the satellite view, but they're at least it's a. Yeah, they can give us a location, but we don't get a lot of the nuance about how it right, easy yeah. it is to maneuver oh, around yeah, there. Right. Yeah. right. Right, and even so, in this case, if there's a new development going in, the satellite may not even have that either. So yeah, and I believe it was a former development, and the alleyway was abated before our our term here. So oh, really? Okay. Yeah, so something along those, uh, something within that process, the resident then reached out and expressed that they no longer had really clear parking mm -hmm. behind their yeah their gotcha. property. Yeah. Councilor Hart. Yeah, I just want to provide some visual. Uh, Observation. So I'm looking at 1440 Milburn, and it's there's a commercial development, and then one single house. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I mean, and so it's just a very unique situation. Yeah. And so what I'm imagining is, folks are parking right here in front of their house, uh -huh. which is you making know, it hard making the request yeah. for the permit. Certainly process. extraneous circumstances. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This yeah. One, yeah. Right, Council McCormick. Hi, thank you. Just uh, a comment on that. It's uh, right, pretty much across the street from the Amp property. Okay. The, um, 16 tech and then uh, right by those IUPUI apartments and stuff. Oh, yeah. So that's probably why they're not having a lot of space. There's a lot of bleed over yeah. parking that goes over there. Okay, very good. Any other questions or comments from counselors? Any other questions or comments from the public on 253? Seeing none, the chair will entertain a motion. So move, Mr. Chairman. It has been moved and seconded to send proposal 253 to the full council with a due pass recommendation. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes have it. Very good. Moving on to 254. Okay, proposal number 254 authorizes a speed limit reduction to 25 miles per hour in the Belmore subdivision of District 25. Very good. That's uh, Brian's district just in time. <laughs> <laughs> Councilor Murray, if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself, do you have any uh, comments you want to make to this proposal? Uh, good evening. My name is Brian Mowry, District 25. Uh, as far as the proposal, I mean, they wanted to make sure their speed limits are uniform, so I was very supportive of it. Very good. Any questions or comments from counselors on this proposal? Seeing none. Any questions or comments from the public on this proposal? Seeing none, the chair will entertain a motion. So moved. Is there a second? Second. second. It has been moved and seconded. Send 254 to the full council with a due pass recommendation. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes have it. Very good. Thank you, Natalie. Thank you, and thank are you for you, your oh, patience. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Great. Um, are you doing the update, or is Director Parker? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, members of the committee, let me take this off for the time being. Uh, we're here for the uh, second quarter update. I apologize for my dress. We were out at a, a construction site today with Councilor Oliver uh, and the mayor, so uh, that's why for the work boots. Um, <laughs> so it's now not up there. <laughs> Next slide. So the first slide, we just want to uh, update you from our uh, 
finance team, I uh, believe uh, Lauren Stevenson, our deputy CFO, is, is here tonight. Um, if you have any questions about this, we wanted to show you sort of collections related to gas tax. Uh, and we are not just running above our budget estimate, but obviously you can see the growth uh, in, in gas tax uh, from July of 2021 uh, to uh, July of 2022. And we also have Sam Barris. Where's Sam? Sam is our, a new member of our team. Sam, Sam stand, stand up, please. Uh -huh. um, Sam is now our, our revenue manager in DPW, so he is uh, getting deep into uh, gas tax and stormwater fees and all that. So, I mean, the good news is that, uh, as you can see, we're running above the year. Those two months that we were uh, under our budget estimate, those were two winter months where when you have a lot of snow, uh, people don't drive, um, and so they don't buy gas. So um, we, we're trending well, and we get this question every year. It drops in August because that's the start of gas distributions for the state, the new fiscal year, and so the state gets their cut first. And so that's why there is that drop. It isn't that people are not buying gas in the summertime. It's because of the way the, the, the formula and the distributions work from the state. So next uh, slide is to give you an update on what we, is really uh, one of the big challenges we have. We're not immune to the labor market. It shows all of the vacancies that we have. Um, uh, as of this morning, 114 vacancies, 30 people in process. Um, really, our operations division has been hit the hardest, uh, as you can see, as we, we kind of uh, laid out all the vacancies. So if you have folks, I'm going to talk about one of the marketing campaigns that um, we're doing to address this, but um, people uh, is, the, is, is the number one challenge. So we've got to find folks to come to work for the city. Yes, sir. What about the public? What? Are you guys hiring felon? folks with like a past record? Yeah. yeah, that is not a that is not a disqualification to work for DBW. So we do take um, we do have a partnership with Keys to Work, um, and you know a lot of folks who do work on the contract uh, from Keys to Work uh, do come to work for us. Um, a lot of times the challenges with that is just you know getting a GED. Uh, or getting a CEO license. So we're working through some of those issues as well. Mm -hmm. Councilor Hart. Uh, do we have a, a pathway? Because I would imagine there's a fair amount of folks that require a CDL in some of these roles. Do we have a, a pathway to try and train some folks that would want to get a CDO? Yeah, so we're actually um, engaging with a vendor to actually perform that for us so that mm -hmm. we would we would essentially buy a certain number of slots. Right. And so if so we would not have the lack of a CDL license be a disqualification mm -hmm. for someone to come work for us. They'd have to come in at a at the say the, a labor rate and then get uh, trained to be a CDL driver and then could be moved into a position that requires a CDL. Okay. But um, you know generally, you know that's a four thousand dollar cost um uh, to get trained to be mm -hmm. a cdl driver but cdl drivers there's a nationwide shortage oh, yeah. of cdl drivers so um we're affected just like everyone else so i mean this affects our solid waste division it affects right. our, our our operations heavily in terms of having those people available right. well, i mean i see that as an investment in people right the people mm -hmm. that live and reside in marion county so if there's you know pathway forward i'm open to that conversation mm -hmm. Yeah, and I've seen a lot of advertisements for free CDL training so on we've, Washington Street. We've, wow. we've finalized an additional policy to um, start with our marketing campaign. Uh, Sign-on bonuses, just like IMPD's done, the sheriff's done, and, and other departments. So we're going to be rolling that out uh, to have sign-on bonuses and referral bonuses so that our own employees can go out and, and try to fill some of these vacancies. The only thing I would add to if we do put the, the CDL training in is some sort of commitment to stay with the city. Mm -hmm. The last thing I'd want to see is that we train, train them and they take the yeah. <laughs> yeah. We pay for the training and then all of a sudden they leave. <laughs> yeah. right. um, so uh, this has been you know, a challenge for us. We talked about it at the beginning of the year, and it's just the labor market I'm going. Councilor Carlino. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and I wanted to echo the sentiments of 
Counselor Hart, I think both on the CDL training and also some of the high school education background, I know that is not an easy test to pass either. And I might even argue for some of our folks, it's easier to pass the CDL test than it is the high school equivalency. Mm. So, um, but to your point, we want to make sure they have a commitment to stay with us and that we're not a training ground for these really high turnover jobs. So right. thank you. Uh, so next, uh, Abby Brands, our, our Deputy Director of Policy and Planning, uh, working with all of you. We've obviously passed the Complete Streets and Table Crash Review Team, which uh, Damon's going to be a great addition to that uh, team representing the Council. Uh, we also put out the RFP on the Reimagining the Curve. This is looking at the sites of the former Blue Indy, uh, and those are due August 19th. So. Um, Next up, uh, Abby's also working on uh, the circle, our solid waste garage. Um, that's a picture of it on the right. Uh, that's the current auto return site. So the, what we did in this last quarter is we put out an RFP for the actual contractor that's going to manage the project for us and put all the bid packages. Obviously, DPW, we build roads, bridges, et cetera. We don't build buildings. Um, so we needed to bring somebody on to do that for us. Um, been working with the Mayor's Action Center to clean up our data. Uh, and enter into a new service level agreement on, on several things. Um, something exciting that you're going to see uh, in our budget proposal, uh, as well as our Rubicon pilot, which is to you know equip GPS and, and, and technology in all of our trucks, um, so that we, there's a lot more standardization and we're not using paper maps and, and whatnot. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things that we're going to be able to do once we fully deploy this across the entire department. That's great. Uh, yeah, that's yes, sir. What's the total cost of this bid? Of the Rubicon? Or, or, the, or, the, or the garage? The garage. The garage itself will be around uh, $12 million? Approximately. Approximately $12 million. And then you see off to the left, there's a separate building that uh, we had to separate the two buildings because of the controlled project limit with property taxes. This was funded with the levy that you, you all passed last year. That's the Solid Waste Administration building, uh, and that's somewhere going to be somewhere between two and three million dollars. So, this person that you hire, that project, is going to be the project manager for those two projects. It, it's essentially we're using a delivery method. Uh, it's the first time for the city. It's called uh, you know uh, construction manager at risk. So, you hire the construction manager, and then they put all the bid packages out for you. So, for us, they can do that and manage the project as well. So have you hired that person? Um, the proposals were due last week. We had seven? Have seven, proposals. seven proposals that were returned. So those will be analyzed, and then we'll pick somebody uh, hopefully in the next month. Thank okay. you. Thanks. Uh, next up, uh, you know, we passed last year through the uh, Board of Public Works and our, in the right-of-way policy. We had a couple of proposals come, come through. Abby's team has to review all of those. And then Abby's also been working with Well Done Marketing for, on the right, what you see is, is you know, a coming a marketing campaign to get folks to sign up to work for DPW, uh, you know, make a good living and, and make a huge difference. So um, we're really excited about this. We've got a target uh, more than just, you know, folks who just go to the city's website. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got to let folks know that we have jobs and they're good paying jobs. Um, do you have this uh, material? Uh, currently, so that you can. Um, they're working on it. Yeah, so we'll have a creative package given to us. Can I come up to the microphone? People listening at home can't hear. Uh, Abby Brands. Um, we'll have a creative package given to us soon. So we just signed off on the creative, and we are signing off on the full media package uh, early next week. Could I? Sorry. Could I recommend also that we include maybe a QR code so that people, especially if they're driving by. They can literally just snap a picture of it. Sure. And, I mean, that's and a, take yeah, you instantly that's something we can to the, for our marketing team. Yeah. Yeah, that would be great. Um, and then once you get that together, can you let me know? Oh, no. Yeah, the intention is to Feel share nice. it with counselors, board yeah. members, anybody who can help get the word out. Yeah, okay, great. Thanks. I, forgive me for making a comment. I was just saying it's illegal to have your phone out and be. Operating it, so the all, well, they're riding by, true. Not driving by they're riding. and we would not endorse any uh, drivers true, doing that. True, we would uh, not. Got a little bit. Yeah, yeah, right. So next, uh, Morgan, Michael, uh, is here uh, with the Office of Sustainability. 
Uh, I hope folks saw the, 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 the fantastic news that Morgan's team put out. It's this first bullet point that I want to kind of focus on. Um, 187 buildings now voluntarily working with uh, the benchmarking. Uh, and so that is uh, great kudos to, to Morgan and her team. Uh, there's a lot of excitement in terms of being able to do this. So um, if you have any additional questions uh, related to that, uh, Morgan would be happy to uh, come up. Uh, next, Sean Brock, our Deputy Director of uh, Solid Waste is here. Um, thank you for continuing to invest in our equipment. You see another uh, uh, packer there, uh, excuse me, a, a side loader there on the right. So we have more equipment coming. I can't get here fast enough. As Sean always has, uh, you know, uh, you'll see on the next slide what he has down each day. But um, they all solid waste also services in you really in the second quarter those 81 cleanup events with KIB. Um, next slide. As you can see, uh, three million, uh, oh, three and a half million trash pickups. Uh, 80,000 80, tons of trash, but we are down, uh, and we're almost back down to pre-pandemic levels in terms of trash. Um, as you can see down at the bottom, we do have we do have a truck issue, but the leases that you've all approved and we've had in our budget um, will take care of that. Unfortunately, it does take a long time to get those trucks delivered um, because they're not just sitting on a lot someplace where we can go pick them up. Uh, next, Nate Self from our environmental team is way in the back. Nate's always sitting in the back of the room. Um, uh, Nate's team deals with with the uh, almost 6,000 folks who uh, work in our, uh, you know, show up to our tax drop events. Uh, you can see all the household hazardous waste that we've been able to discharge, and then Nate's team works with the sustainability team to run the the uh, top, the uh, e cycle events. Uh, and you can see how many pounds uh, you know, we're keeping out of, of folks' the trash bin. Next is forestry and stormwater. I think Lacey Johnson Councilor, is here. Councilor Oliver, I have a question. About this. Sir, sorry. sorry. Is this on the on I, environmental? I think I, <laughs> can I kind of quick, let me go back to this page right here about the shortfall. Or on the solid waste on the shortfall? Yes. Page here. Uh, the retention of the CDL drivers, is there any restrictions that they cannot go somewhere else uh, after they're trained, et cetera, et cetera? Can they, any restrictions? I mean, a lot of the folks that have left us, uh, yes. and I can I can bring up Sean and, and Tim from operations, uh, a lot of the folks that are leaving us are going to places that they've increased their pay. To, I think Sean told me this morning you had something to leave that got a ten dollar per hour increase. So you know we're paying a little, more, we're paying almost twenty one fifty, and he went to a job with thirty one dollars. So CDL driver is is a hot commodity in the market, and so um, a lot of the driver shortfall that Sean has is he's got nineteen positions that are vacant, and then folks it's the summertime, folks take time off. They call them sick, FMLA, light duty. So with all of that, he's typically on a given day, starting the day behind. So it's a challenge until we can get until we can get more folks trained to be CDL drivers and fill some of these spots. That that's okay. They, they've been trained, but there's no. If if we pay for the training, we are going to ask for a stipulation. That they have to remain working for the for the city uh, for a given period. So once we have that contract established with the entity that will provide the training, then we'll set a policy that if we pay for your training, you're going to have to remain working for us for for a prolonged period of time. Uh, for Lacey Johnson, our administrator of uh, stormwater operations, is with us. Um, so Lacey has forestry, stormwater. He also does the grounds maintenance. Uh, starting this year, he had the folks who you know mow the parks and whatnot. So they handle litter, uh, brush removal, mowing levees, as you can see on the right there. Uh, hazard, hazardous trees and clearing the channel. So Lacey's team does a lot. Uh, the next slide, you can see them doing some uh, brush backs. 
uh, along the city right away. Um, unfortunately, a lot of the rain in the spring causes a lot of brush to grow uh, in the second quarter. So we've been spending a lot of time uh, doing that. Uh, Terry George, our, our administrator of traffic operations, couldn't be here, but um, they're always busy, um, as you can see. And uh, moving on, Terry's group also serves with, with Steve Pruitt, our administrator of special events, uh, to handle all of these. You know, the second quarter of special events really start to take off, uh, and they're doing work uh, all over the city. Uh, Terry also does our street sweeping, as you can see uh, in that slide. Uh, we've started to do more and more in the bike lanes because that has been something that Damon's group, uh, who was here earlier, has been uh, particularly uh, viewing as important. And this is always your number one issue, so I knew you were going to have a question. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chair. Yes, Councilor Hart. Thanks, sir. So, you know, and I, and I go back and forth on this stuff all the time, and it's, it's, it's not only me, but it's my constituents asking too, so that's why I have to continuously bring it up. Uh, you know, as I get more familiar with the subject, the, the, the part that gives me the most grief is the, the map that is set for street sweeping, right? It doesn't really go out into our district. It's really Center Township and Broad Ripple. And, you know, I would like to look for a solution to where we can expand that, you know, one, to keep neighborhoods more clean, but also to keep our drainage system uh, in better shape. Um, you know, I did mention it to, to Ken when we had our conversations about, you know, what, what, what was your, your ticket item for the budget? And I said residential street sweepers, right? Because I think that has a, a dual purpose uh, benefit to the city. I'm just going to, you know, belay that point now, right? That the more we can do to expand that map, get some smaller street sweepers in there, I think everybody benefits. Um, you know, there's always the constant battle, right, when I'm talking to my constituents that I try and say, you know, we as a city have a responsibility, but we as homeowners also have responsibilities, right? So, you know, trying to show that, you know, it's it's no fun, but <laughs> going up and, and sweeping at the end of your driveway, stripping, sweeping at the end of your street is valuable and the same thing. But if we could if we could look to start expanding that map, I think that the city of Minneapolis could, you know, be even more beautiful. So two things <clears throat> follow up on that. The 669, they just had the, the, the major sweepers for the thoroughfares out into the county. We've been doing this for three years. They've been trying to perfect it. Mm -hmm. um, those big sweepers were just delivered this, this past year. So that's why we're starting to deploy further out. But these machines require a CDL as well. So it's one of those challenges where we are required by EPA consent decree mm -hmm. to do the combined area. So that's why, obviously, you see much more focus in on that. Just to remind you that part of the way we funded this when we took it back from Citizens Energy was that parking meters help underwrite the cost of the sweeping. So that's why Broad Ripple and, and downtown do get a significant more uh, because the parking meters are located in downtown in Broad Ripple. Um, but we're, if we can keep going, um, we did have, um, Tim, was it two sweepers that got, that got swiped? Two. So we are self-insured. We had two drivers that weren't paying attention right into the back of two sweepers. And these are leased, so we have to send them back to the vendors. And in this market, you don't get them back. Okay. So it's one of those things of, of and I hear you, but 8,428 lane miles of streets to sweep, we have 19 people that do this. Mm -hmm. So it's going it, to, I mean, our goal is to get to that original proposal that we said, which was if, you, if the street gets salt in the winter, it should be swept in summer mm -hmm. to, for, for water quality purposes. That's still the goal. We didn't ever say that we were going to try to get all residential streets because that would be, we would have a bigger workforce in sweeping mm -hmm. than we currently do in pothole duty to get that done. That's a lot of equipment. So I hear you. 
And I know this is your this is your number one issue. <laughs> it's, it's my alley. Well, I've brought it up a lot. I mean, over the the years that I've been on the council too, and I know that you know, I live in Center Township, but a lot of the local streets in my area don't get swept either. Um, but I think it also adds to the degradation of the existing infrastructure when the dirt uh, uh, gathers in the curb area and plants start growing in there. And sometimes those plants will get up to be four and five feet tall. And then those roots are breaking apart the asphalt, pulling away from the, uh, the curb. Uh, and that allows more water to get in there and breaks up the, the, the asphalt as well. So I think there's a larger reason than just dirt and the storm water, but also in preservation of infrastructure, there are roads and curbs. So I've been talking about it for a long time too. Councilor Mallory, do you have a question? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, not so much questions to comment. Uh, Director Parker, you had mentioned that downtown and Broad River will primarily get the street sweeping because they have uh, the meters there. And I can understand to an extent, but my issue with that statement though is that it's not just those people that live there using those meters. It's people that are coming from our districts, all from around the city, that are using, that are paying those meters. So, if we're going to look at it that way, then we need to. Then we absolutely should be out in the streets and outside of you know downtown. I, I understand that. The stipulation with the parking meter dollars is that parking meter dollars have to be spent in parking where areas. the parking meters are right. generated. So, like, when parking meters are generated from from either downtown or Broad Ripple. Uh, I've had this art discussion with the councilor to your right many times that if there's parking meters in Fountain Square, we could spend money in Fountain Square. But so you have to you have to spend it where it's actually generated. And so yeah, that was one of the things part of why we wanted to do that was just so that the downtown sweeping itself could help subsidize so that the dollars that we were taking from our budget could then be deployed out to the county. Because before before we, we, we did that, there was nothing at all going getting outside the combined area. Nothing at all. And so we thought it was important to do that, have the meters essentially subsidize the sweeping downtown so that we could then bring it out to the to the outer parts of the county that never received anything at all. Thank you. Very good. Any further questions? Okay. Uh, next is uh, the dreaded P word. Uh, I think Ronnie Broden, our administrator of street operations, is here. Um, the, um, the guys who started to make progress, thank you for, for uh, we'll talk a little bit later about the COET um, with some of those roads going over. The crews have been able to handle a lot more in residential neighborhoods. Um, still, uh, more than three quarters of the open service requests we have are in residential neighborhoods. Um, the issue that we've run into in the second quarter and with some of the heat is that it's really tough to put somebody behind a 400 degree uh, hot box on days like today. So we've been trying to do mornings uh, and then our second shift, do it late at night. Um, you know, heat index of 115 in a hot box, you gotta think of your employees. So. Um, that slowed us down a little bit, but as you can see, we are we have done more productivity with less staff this year uh, than even last year. So the men and women have been working incredibly hard to, to hit this. Um, Councilor Hart, yeah, I, I want to give kudos real quick. Um, I think one thing you, we moved over really quickly there was the 85 tons, tons of illegally dumped material from the streets. I have consistent issues in my district on two streets that I can think of off the top of my head. One is Connection Avenue, which is next to Emerson, and another one is Minnesota, which is just west of Arlington, that if you clean up, DPW is cleaning up trash on a Monday, there are couches and chairs and mattresses and tires on Wednesday. I mean, it is, it's unreal, right? And it just drives me bonkers because you know, we've, we've tried sending in letters and we're told, well, it's not definitive that that was the person that, you know, actually dumped the material. Uh, but big kudos on the ability to pick that up. I've had multiple requests come in recently and they've been picked up immediately. So thank you there. Uh, but I think we've got, we've got to be a little bit more strategic on how we're preventing that from happening. You know, I, I've talked to some constituents and everybody goes, you know, straight to cameras. 
you know, if they're effective, maybe. You know, some say they've just put up dummy cameras, and that's helped deter it. But, you know, I'd like to start, you know, thinking a little bit more forward on, on how we can prevent some of these uh, illegally dumped materials from happening because it's just over and over and over again. There, there was a program with BNS that had implemented a similar program like that. If you had a, a case of illegal dumping, you call it into BNS. BNS sends a, a notice to the property owner, hey, you've got a mess here, you've got to clean it up or you're going to be cited. And they say, well, it's not my mess. So BNS goes out and cleans it up and says, hey, you need to take steps to prevent this from happening again. If it happens again, they let them know that if it happens one more time, they're going to be fine for that. So that if, it, if it's a continual problem, they have a program they were supposed to anyway. I don't know if they still do. To be able to put a camera up mm -hmm. or to have a team that would go through whatever was dumped to try to locate some junk mail or something else that would sort of nail down where it came from. And I, I haven't heard if we're still doing that or not, but I know that the Near East side is just riddled with illegal dumping in alleys. So I think it's that we don't have enough, because I remember Director Madison talking about that. We don't have enough cameras to really cover it. Strange, a lot of our cameras aren't working the way they're supposed to. <laughs> so anyway, sorry about that. Director, you can keep going. Uh, next up is our, our, our street maintenance, and this is the residential re, uh, resurfacing, not reconstruction, resurfacing. So this is out of our District 4 garage down at five points. Um, and so you can see the projects over on the left uh, that they've completed. Um, they're working on uh, Steinmeier and, and Piccadilly Lane now. And they're going to be moving to Bay Bridge. So they've been moving around uh, the county uh, and working on those. On those, these are the uh, streets that you all uh, submit during the budget process. So uh, just as a note, Natalie will be sending out a, a note to each one of you for the streets that you'd like to see for resurfacing next year. This is sort of the segment that you get inserted into the budget. So this is not re reconstruction like we just went through with the uh, COET dollars. This is just pure resurfacing. Uh, next up, uh, is Bill Rogers here? Bill? Uh, Bill's our administrator of fleet. Uh, Bill's team continues to, to win awards um, for their great work. And um, as you can see, you know, a top 50 leading fleet, and then down at the bottom there, number, number 22 in the best fleets uh, in, in, in America. So congratulations to Bill and his team. Uh, we need mechanics, too. Um, Bill needs mechanics. So if you know anybody who's an auto mechanic, have them apply to DPW. Uh, and so then we'll, uh, we'll leave uh, engineering. Uh, we got John Bowen, our chief engineer. We've got David Borden, our administrator of construction, and Shannon Killian, our administrator of storm. Uh, Erica Miller, our deputy director, is on vacation uh, with her family. Uh, so we finished 12 projects in the second quarter. Uh, most of our projects are underway. We'll get into specific lists. Um, 12 new projects bid. Um, the big announcement in the second quarter is down on the right. Uh, is the Connected Communities. If you did not see this, this is uh, just wonderful news where uh, the, the Lilly Endowment and the Central Indiana Community Foundation uh, matched what the mayor proposed and passed last year in terms of the $25 million for Circle City Ford Phase 3. So you, uh, just more trail uh, and greenway construction and connections uh, that the Lilly Endowment and, and the Central Indiana CICF were really uh, uh, excited about. Um, the picture on the top is, is the project that we talked about today in, in Councilor Oliver's district. It affects his district and in, in the chairman's district. Uh, that's our Keystone outfall. Those are 78 uh, inch pipes that are going to be the trunk line for uh, solving the drainage uh, in that neighborhood that's been consistently flooding mm -hmm. each time it rains. Councilor Oliver? Yes, thank you. Uh, that's not to mention my district. Uh, yes, it is. It's uh, long overdue, all over the city, <laughs> pretty much. But this, I want to question the downtown area there, where the canal used to flow all the way through to a uh, military park. They started boarding it up, boarding it up to where it stopped short. And we can see as Fall Creek come down, White River come down, and dumped into it. It splits off in Fall Creek. And then the canal now it stops at, I think, 16th Street. Uh, where did that water go? 
that got filled in, I believe, for the, for the interstate project, but we can get you the full details, but that piece of the canal from 16th up, essentially where it ends now at the water, at the, the, the uh, water plant. It, it splits. Yeah, it Concrete splits and goes west and then south. Yeah, so that was that was closed in to, for the interstate construction. But we can get the you. Dam. I was yeah. asking about that dam down there. Yeah. Oh, at the 16th Street Dam? No, first, yeah. Uh, I think New York, the, the dam. The Emmerichsville Dam? What do you call it? Emmerichsville? That, that's, the, that's the dam that failed in the river? Yeah. Okay. Yes. So that, that was decommissioned three years ago, and so uh, that's the reason uh, Citizens Energy uh, built the new dam up there as a part of Riverside Park. So that, they call it the Rock Ramp Dam, is now uh, fully operational, I believe. David, it's fully operational, isn't it? Yeah. So the reason that one was built was because Emmerichsville um, failed and um, could not be, could not be uh, brought back. So that's why there's a big hole in the middle. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so next up is I is, uh, just wanted to give you an update on uh, the 13 million that we, that we worked together to pass. Um, we have completed uh, 18 segments, uh, both submitted by uh, counselors. We have three in progress. The three in progress are West 56th Street, uh, Eastwood, uh, excuse me, uh, East Hannah, and what's the third one? Oh, uh, East Troy uh, for uh, Councilor Mascari. One's Councilor uh, Hartz and Councilor Carlina with West 56th Street. So um, they're moving. Um, we've spent about four and a half million of, of the dollars that we allocated uh, so far for. Um, and that's, that does not include any of the dollars that have been spent so far on the three uh, pro uh, projects that are in progress. We finally got uh, the last today, the last uh, uh, of your colleagues got their selections in for um, the design for the next round of residential uh, street construction. So we sent that to engineering to start reviewing. They'll go through all of your priorities, um, go out and then try to efficiently package together the greatest number of streets in the number of neighborhoods to try to put those packages together so we can keep those packages at $25 million, hopefully. Um, so that's the, the groupings that we yes. turned in yes. by neighborhood. Uh, by neighborhood, right. correct. Councilor Green? <laughs> From High School Road to Eagle Creek Golf Course on 56th Street, are we doing anything with this group? High School Road to to where? To Eagle Creek Golf Course. The, the limits that the Councilor Carlino put in for was, was, well, she wanted from Raceway Road to Lafayette. That was a little pricey. So it was uh, Potter's Pike to Lafayette. Yes, sir. Okay. That'll get the golf course. Okay. Fish Potter's Pike. Big bridge. Um, the, uh, and then I uh, want to give a shout out to our comms team. Um, they do a lot of public meetings, uh, seven in the, in the second quarter. Uh, this North Meridian drainage project and the one, the picture that you see there is for our West Michigan uh, road diet project that's going to be uh, bidding through NDOT uh, in the next quarter we'll talk about. Uh, next up in the second quarter, uh, the thing that I think most of you care about because it's mainly the phone calls that I get, is the Circle City Forward Phase 2, which is the residential street construction. So we have five contracts with over 250 residential road segments as a part of it. All of these contracts were, um, their contracts went to the board, were approved by the Board of Public Works, and finally, just last week, or excuse me, earlier this week, we have signatures on all five contracts by everybody that needed to sign them. So um, uh, David has got um, more information if you have questions about these. Um, the contracts, the contractors submit to us their schedules. Um, and so there was a lot of haggling back and forth. The contractors were hoping to get a little more leeway 
uh, on these just because there's been there's so much uh, on their plate. So um, these projects will start, and um, some of them might are going to roll over into 2023 uh, for completion. So uh, we talked about the projects that. that um, uh, completed. There's the list uh, of the, those that uh, actually got done uh, in the second quarter. Um, next up is the projects that are in progress. Um, Council Hart, do you have a question? Just a request. Um, next, in Q3, if we could add a column to this table that just puts in the, the council district that these are residing in, I think it would just be helpful for a quick view. Yeah, a lot of the ones that, uh, on the, so the JOC is, is our job order contract. That, that a lot of those are, are countywide. Um, so what, once the money is expended that we have allocated, that, that closes it out. But a lot of these are ones that are just all over. So, but I will make a note. Mr. Chief? Yeah, Councilor Klein. Uh, to that point, if we could, um, if I could ask a request for um, quarter three updates on that Circle City Forward Phase Two, Director Parker, to get maybe um, updates to know if some of those projects will go in, into 2023 or timelines. I know there there are a lot of segments and they're everywhere, and so maybe that would help us communicate so we're not mm -hmm. sending as many things up the chain. Yeah, so. David, what did it take? Uh, County Met was County Met was first. We thought they would start the first week of July, and they ended up. When did they start? Uh, so David Borden, uh, good afternoon, good evening. Um, they uh, started um, a couple days ago, basically. I mean, so they have started. I think it was like the 12th or 13th. They actually began work on ST 22096. So that was the first one out of the gate. Um, they're going to get a good majority of theirs probably done this year, but the rest of the projects, uh, contractors have, uh, they've got more workload uh, than what Calumet has. So uh, they're going to get some, as the director said, started this year. Um, but concrete uh, is still problematic, like we talked about, I think, or I mentioned last time, um, that's only gotten worse. Uh, so that's going to be uh, inhibiting them. And uh, again, the projects that they're currently working on for us now. Uh, a lot of those will get pushed into 2023. So that first contract that started, that was the sort of northwest quadrant. So we've kind of broken up the five packages into the different parts of the city. So um, that's it kind of started. It was in Council of Barth's district, uh, so right by St. Joan of Arc. And so they're going to be moving that way, yeah. moving, moving from sort of east to west in that package. I do thank you, Director, and thank you, Mr. Borden. I think since we've been planning these and talking about some of these for a little over a year now, maybe two, I lose oh, track of time. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I think um, just making sure that we're able to communicate to the public like things are coming, educate them. Um, my most recent um, somewhat abusive email that I got about this was like promises, promises, and it's like I, we, we have to just be able to explain those things yeah. um, and things are coming and for some of those residents residential areas won't be coming until 2023 and just keeping that transparency yeah and i i, I know the impatience that's out there because they're terrible streets like we yeah. picked the worst yeah. of the yeah. worst so yeah. people are driving in a minefield and we as counselors recognize this and dpw recognizes this and yeah it's not good I, i'd like to sort of pat you know the folks on the back that Typically, you know, our process would be for, with planning and design that it, it would take us 12 months to get to bid. What I would say is this we is took, actually expedited. <laughs> we, we took these. We didn't have final selections until August of last year. We did design and bid and award in less than 12 months. That's amazing. And so that is amazing. I know that's not fast enough for the people who call you and then you call us and, and <laughs> you want them done immediately, but it was a very quick turnaround from, yeah. from the time period, from the time everybody got their selections in to the moment we said, hey, we'll, we'll pick these, design them, and then get them out. So I know for most folks, they don't like the planning and designing side of this, 
we got to do it. You got to do that before you actually put something in the ground. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Director. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yeah. and I would I would also ask to when we have uh, requests from counselors or requests to counselors to turn in certain lists that we submit those with a deadline and it be a hard deadline. Um, it's important that counselors are turning their information in a timely manner because we can see if you turn them in late, then the whole thing gets delayed. So if well, we- Well, kudos, Mr. Chairman, to some folks on this committee who the night you voted on it gave their selections that night. <laughs> Well, that's well, that's good. Uh, but if we, if we could go into it with a with a hard deadline, and unfortunately, if we go past that deadline, you're going to have to wait until the following year. You know, just because, just in the interest of us being able to keep our promises in a timely manner to to the rest of our constituents, uh, waiting for, for one person to turn their things in isn't fair to everybody else. So I would just request that. So in terms of our projects that are in progress, as you can see. Um, we've got them broken out. i uh, be happy to answer any questions that anyone has on specific projects. As you can see, we have a lot of projects going on uh, as a part of, you know, almost $180 million that we're spending on the transportation side. Um, and then the final one, one, flip the next one, is these are the projects that have yet to bid. Um, and so uh, we look forward to get those out. And then the future ones, these are ones that we thought would uh, at least start in 2022. Uh, and for one reason or another, whether it was utility coordination or you know cost, um, their, their bid dates have been kind of pushed back. So uh, that's significant. Just we want to make sure that, uh, you know, obviously for transparency purposes, when a project gets pushed, that you know everybody knows when those get pushed. So, be happy to answer any questions about uh, some of these, but wanted to make sure that you had sort of the estimated bid date uh, for when those future projects would be. And with that, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm happy to take any questions. Very good. Well, we sort of peppered you with questions throughout, but uh, are there any other questions from counselors on any of this update? Councilor Oliver. To be an observation, Mr. Rick, we have expressways coming into our city, three or four or five come right into our city, uh, seemingly well paid to uh, accommodate the 170,000 that come into our city every day from the outlined donut counties. Uh, I've seen your interview of the press, I think, last week. Uh, where we had on funding from the state uh, on equity? Uh, you know, we, uh, I think it was our Last meeting or the meeting before, we, we went through that. Um, that. I mean, that is something that we are um, focused on, in, you know, bringing some of our regional partners into that conversation. Uh, I was invited by the Mayor Fishers to, to speak to the Central Indiana uh, Regional Development Authority to go over that very subject. So we are getting great feedback from, you know, sort of our neighbors that this is an issue that they understand that it affects us a lot right now, but it's going to affect them even more in the future. So the more allies we can get towards figuring that out and how do we have a winning message over the legislature to uh, sort of change some of these formulas that really, you know, sort of, they were created a long time ago, but, you know, sort of hurt Indianapolis now and we don't get our fair share. So um, we're making progress on that issue. So there are people listening. Yes. <laughs> Good. Any other questions or count from counselors? Oh, I do. I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> My feedback is actually um, for Natalie. Just thank you. I know you've not been on very long, but um, just like we peppered Director Parker with questions throughout, I know we are definitely tapping your shoulder a lot. And so thank you. You had some big shoes to fill, and you continue to fill those. And despite not knowing some of the ins and outs of the loading zone, killed it tonight. So thank you, sister. <laughs> thank you. I really appreciate that. Uh, very good. Seeing none, uh, is there any, I, I want to give a shout out to John Hazlett, who is with uh, Storm uh, uh, Soil and Water. Very good. Just because he's here, he'll be giving a presentation, I'm sure, soon. Um, any other? Did I miss, did I miss anybody? Show it up. And Tim Joyce is back. Tim Joyce is back. Tim? Is that there? Yeah, he's back. He's there. He is. 
Very good. Well, good to see you. Um, seeing no questions or comments, Chair, will I entertain a motion? Oh, Mr. President, it's a special privilege to acknowledge the uh, one of our own counselors in the past, uh, Councilor Boyd, who served as counselor many, many years and a great servant to our community. Uh, I just want to acknowledge his passing. Oh, no, that's yes, terrible. Councilor Roger, former Councilor Roger. Oh, boy. Right. Yeah, uh, Roselle. Yes, sir. Roselle Boyd. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, I remember him. He was a good guy. Well, well he'll be missed. Um, with that, and the Chair will entertain a motion to adjourn? Yes, so, so we are adjourned. Good. Thank you.